Everybody, Andy White here. What you are about to hear is the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. And I want to welcome everybody from all across the fruited plain and all around the spherical globe. Thanks for tuning in to this week's brand new edition of Open Up the Doors. And I am streaming live over on my uh, Facebook Open Up the Doors page. If you'd like to join in the conversation over there, go on over to Facebook.com slash FaithFM91.7. That is the Open Up the Doors page page if you've never liked the page please like the page and uh just be you know part of the all that we're doing with this open up the doors ministry and you'll be informed as well um if you are on if you'd like to follow me on the truth social network you can follow me over there at aj white i am on truth social aj white uh follow me over there as well the the uh the, the networking is growing there it's, it's been really Really wonderful to meet and make new friends over there on Truth Social from all, all over the Fruited Plain. If you'd like to correspond with me, you can email me at ajwhite777 at icloud.com. It's ajwhite777 at icloud.com if you would like to shoot me a private email and and, uh, just, you know, for whatever reason, ask me a question or uh, send me your thoughts on the broadcasts. It's all good. It's all good. If you are outside of the Faith FM broadcast area, the best way to listen to Faith FM is to download the free Faith FM app. We have the app both for the Android platforms and, of course, the Apple platforms. Just look up Faith FM in Sag Harbor, and you'll be able to listen to great Christian programming 24-7. If you'd like to be part of the broadcast today, I plan on going to the phones if you'd like to call in. Write down the phone number right now. The phone number is 631-725-2069. 631-725-2069. And I will take your calls in the second hour. But all right, I got through my preliminaries right there, and I got to hop on it because seriously, I know I say this every week, but I'm really serious this week. We have got a lot to talk about. In fact, there is so much going on right now. There are so many things exploding on the scene right now. I, I, I really almost don't know where to begin, brothers and sisters. I'm perplexed on what to focus on. I mean, should I begin with the long overdue impeachment inquiry of Joe Biden? I mean, or should I begin with how New Mexico's governor thinks she can suspend the U.S. Constitution and ban Second Amendment rights based on her own exaggerated sense of her self-importance and authority? I don't know. Maybe I should begin with the complete meltdown on our southern borders that's going on right now, both on our southern border and and also now on our northern border as well. There was a report the other day how how, uh, we've got a lot of illegal aliens flooding in over the northern border between Canada and the U.S. now. But I don't know where to begin. Should I talk about should I talk about the renewed and doubled down censorship and the the attack on free speech that's being implemented right now, even as I speak? Should I talk about how American companies are now going to have to submit? Have you heard about this? You will. American companies, big tech companies are going to have to submit to 
Europe to the European Union's new censorship law. They they enacted it. It went into enforcement this past week. The Digital Services Act in the EU. And it's being enforced now. And yes, my friends, yes, listen to this. America's big tech companies, every one of them, are now being forced upon penalty of huge fines by Europe to dictate and infringe upon our Americans' First Amendment rights. Oh, isn't that just lovely? Do you think censorship has, has, is bad now? Oh, it's about to get a whole lot worse. The world's largest social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Google, will all have to crack down on quote unquote illegal and harmful content or else face hefty fines from the European Union's Digital Services Act. Uh, What exactly is illegal content and who determines what illegal and harmful content content is well they do of course hey i know i know a bunch of you have been noticing this and i didn't connect the dots until actually the other day because this this digital services act just got implemented uh about a week or so ago but it was it's been it's been it's been on the it's they've been working on it for the past year but now it's in enforcement and have you noticed and i know you have because i've been seeing it all over facebook how you keep getting these 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 uh rather vague uh, notifications i'm getting them almost, i'm getting several a day now oh, that's funny several a day at first i thought it was a I, I thought it was a an algorithm glitch at first because it would say you know content has been removed for cybersecurity reasons and doesn't doesn't fit you know do, uh, your, your your post did not go along with our community guidelines and then you go and look to see what you posted the last few days you don't see anything missing i've been seeing everyone's talking about this on facebook so i I just really thought it was a glitch, but the other day, because there's never any, there's never any information attached to the notification, except unless, see, most of us use Facebook. I think most of us offer offer our apps, whether it's iPhone or iPad. But the other day, I was sitting at my at my computer, at my laptop, doing some work, and one of these notifications popped up, and it was, you know, we remove content. And I looked at the date; it was from a video from 2019, and all of a sudden, the light bulb went off in my head. There. They're going back in time and taking and they are purging. Facebook is purging all of these posts that we don't see anymore because they're way, way, way downstream back on our timelines. But they're purging all the old posts. And it's it just dawned on me that this started happening exactly at the same time this European law came into effect. So Connect the dots, folks. Connect the dots. We have now got Europe dictating what we as Americans can say and, 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 and post online. But that's not what the broadcast today is about, although maybe a little bit, because I, I, I'm going to go through all of this stuff. Like I said, I don't know where to begin. There's, there's a whole lot of chickens coming home to roost, and the chicken coop is about to collapse, my friends. And I'm going to try and touch upon all of these things today in this broadcast. And we'll see what I can get to because they're all they're all important. But here's the thing. Very importantly, I'm going to go through this stuff that that's happening. But at some point later on in this broadcast, I'm going to give you my sober evaluation and biblical analysis of all that's going on regarding our country and where we're finding ourselves. Because I'm going to tell you some things that you just won't hear anywhere else. Because I'm going to give you what I see is happening from a scriptural standpoint. And most don't want to, and most won't say the things I'm going to say later on in this broadcast regarding these things. But I take God's word seriously and literally, folks. And God told us in his word what he would do any and all nations that rejected his word and his ways. He destroyed the Amorites from the face of the earth. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah from the face of the earth. He told Israel what would happen to them, his chosen people, the apple of his eye, but he told, and we're going to look at this later, he told Israel what would happen to them if they rejected his ways. 
and here's the deal. The New Testament tells us that all of these things were written and given as examples for us to learn by and to instruct us. So stick to the end of this broadcast, folks, if you're able to, because we're in for quite a ride. But I need to tell you, I am very vexed in my spirit. And as I look around at the quickly deteriorating condition of our nation, I keep asking myself, how long, how long, how long, how long before America finally collapses? How long before we experience a great national meltdown? How much more can this nation take and endure? Can America survive its own self-destruction and implosion? About two weeks ago, Sarah Palin was on the Eric Bowling show on Newsmax. And she rhetorically asked Eric regarding both the left and uh, uh, regarding, regarding what the left was doing and all the insane and truly destructive things that the Biden administration has been doing. She asked Bowling, and she asked it very rhetorically. She asked Eric, do they want a civil war? And Sarah Palin was, she's not the only one asking the question. And to be clear, she wasn't advocating for one either, as she was falsely being accused of by the miscreant media after her appearance on Bowling's newscast. But let's be clear, folks. There are reasons for asking the question. Because the ones who are clearly fomenting for these things are those America-hating Marxists on the left. Let me just take a, a little trip down memory lane to refresh your memories. Remember when Congresswoman Ayanna Presley said there needs to be unrest in the streets? <laughs> Now I'm laughing. I'm laughing. Oh, I, I just got interrupted. I, I interrupt this broadcast because I just got a news flash coming across my screen right now at this very moment. I got a notification from Facebook. We removed your content. <laughs> we can't show this content that you shared on Facebook. See why? This is this is coming up on my laptop, so maybe maybe I can see why. What did they remove now? What did they remove? This is happening right now in real time. Um, no, they're not showing me what they removed. Your content goes against our community standards. I would love to see what the data is on this, but they're not showing that. The other day they did. Oh, well. Oh, well. Back, back to our regularly sponsored broadcast. <laughs> I'm laughing because, like, like, folks, hello, yeah, yeah, what's this? This is what's going on. Uh, now we're, like I said, we thought we were censored before. Now we're going to get censored in real time. But let me let, let's let's go back. Let me let me let me re, let me retrace my steps a little bit here. Because you know they're accusing us, conservatives and Christians and everyone basically who doesn't agree with them. They're accusing us of being the fascists. They're accusing us of, of trying to foment civil unrest when, in fact, again, it's their M.O. to uh, accuse and blame you for the things they themselves are doing. But remember, let's take this little trip down memory lane to refresh our memories. Remember when Congresswoman Ayanna Presley said, quote, there needs to be unrest in the streets. And she said that during the 2020 riots that were happening all over the country. And remember when Kamala Harris said that, quote, the protesters should not let up as they were looting and burning down cities and towns across America. How about this one from the hit parade? Remember when Maxine Waters was instigating and fomenting civil unrest when she publicly shouted at a rally, quote, if you see anybody from that cabinet, referring to Trump's administration, if you see anybody from that cabinet 
anybody from his cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store. You get out and you create a crowd and you push back on them. You see, see folks, these are all actual quotes from them and it's all on video so they can't deny it but they can they can definitely try and shove it down the memory hole on on the internet like they try to do they try to make believe that these things don't exist that we don't have a record of what they they themselves have said they themselves have instigated they themselves have fomented because the hypocrisy and the audacity and the gall of these leftists is mind numbing then there was this doozy from Nancy Pelosi, remember this. She was actually defending the BLM and Antifa riots a few years ago when she said this, quote, quote, I just don't know why there aren't uprisings all, of, all over the country. Maybe there will be. Yeah, and that's what she wished for. And that's what she planned for, for January 6th. January 6th, as I've said so many times in the past, was the Reichstag moment. The deep state set up and instigated the January 6th insurrection. And there's more and more and more evidence of that that's come out. So they could flag this all they want. They could deny this all they want. They could have the, 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 the miscreant tech companies, the malfeasance, censor this all they want, but we'll keep saying it, we'll keep exposing the truth, and we'll keep saying, no, they set it up. It was a setup, but they're, what they've deemed as the January 6th insurrection. That wasn't an insurrection, by the way, but rather it was a setup that entrapped. Here's the tragedy. It was a setup that entrapped a lot of people who tragically tragically to this day are still wallowing in prison in complete disregard of their basic constitutional rights yes my friends we are no better than some despotic communist state when we have american citizens being held as political prisoners sitting in prisons in washington dc average everyday normal men and women and even grandmothers whose constitutional rights have been trampled underfoot by this corrupt deep state malfeasance who truly do want they truly do want a civil war this is what they want folks make no mistake about it they are biting at the bit for it because it will give them all the excuse they need to go full-on totalitarian i pray to god we don't give it to them but sooner or later a group out there is just gonna you know uh, uh, this is what they're fomenting and they will and they are instigating for it. They will foment it and they will create it. How do I know that? How can I say that? Because this is what Marxist communists have done in every communist revolution for the last 150 years. Just the other day in Orange County, California, let me read this to you because this might have flown under your, under your radar. But this was the headline in, in, in the Fox News report. Communists demand end to Christian fascism at chaotic school board meeting over parental notification policy. That was the headline. Communists demand end to Christian fascism. The school board, uh, in, in the school board in this, uh, in this in this California district, they were having a meeting to bring in new uh, uh, new regulations regarding the disclosure of students who come out as being transgender because a woman had and she won. She sued the she sued the school system because they transitioned uh, her daughter without her without her even knowing about it. So she sued them and she won hundred thousand dollars and she had to bring her daughter back through all kinds of. Uh, you know, therapy and psychology. and But anyway, so now California, the, the school districts are like, okay, we can't be doing this anymore. We've got we've to come up with some, some restrictions and some regulations. But the communists don't like that. So listen to this report 
out of Fox News. Chaos erupted at a Southern California District School Board meeting Thursday. That would have been one week ago today. When communist protesters clashed with parents. At the meeting, the Orange Unified School Board passed a parental notification policy similar to ones passed in five other districts across the state that would require staff to notify parents when their child identifies as a transgender. Before the deciding vote was cast, members of the this is it, they were at this meeting, members of the Revolutionary Communist Party disrupted the event, shouting down parents and supporters with a megaphone. During the open mic, open comment portion of the school board meeting, before it got chaotic, this was kind of like, this was when they were first lighting the match for it to become chaotic, a woman got up to the podium, and we believe in free speech, so they let her speak. But this woman, who identified herself as a member of the Revolutionary Communist Party, told the people in the audience, they remember the, the, the parents of the students, the parents who want to protect their children, this, 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 uh, what do I want to say? This, this woman from the Revolutionary Communist Party told the audience, quote, we're getting organized for a real revolution to get rid of the system. Any kind of trying to negotiate with any of these fascists in this room, that would be the parents, the fascists on the board, this is illegitimate. This meeting is illegitimate. These policies are illegitimate, and we won't stand for it. She then called for the people to, quote, get ready for a revolution to overthrow this whole system that gave birth to this white supremacy and this male supremacy. Another speaker with this communist group said the country was heading towards a crisis. Well, she's right about that because they're the ones who are fomenting it. But listen to, listen to what she says carefully here, people. This other revolutionary communist party member said this, This country is headed toward a crisis of Christian fundamentalist fascists going for power. She called on opponents of this new school board policy to be brave and to gear up and to get ready for an all-out fight to bring into being a new society. And yet the media doesn't really recover this. Fox News did, but you didn't see this on anybody on, on CNN, MSNBC, CBS. I'm sure you didn't, NBC, because they just want to hop on, you know, Sarah Palin rhetorically asking a question, do they want the Civil War? Well, if you ask these people, yes, they do. The Revolutionary Communist Party told Fox News regarding this new school policy, and I'm quoting from what their statement was, this policy is part of a larger Christian fascist movement with a theocratic agenda of ruling through open white supremacy, male supremacy, and open violence and terror. I mean, these people are nuts. (laughs) This is what they are. They're the ones being violent. They're the ones calling for terror, but they're blaming you and me. That's what they do. This, this spokesperson for this organization said, quote, these fascists at the school boards, in the courts, and throughout society are moving to steal elections that they lose or resort to outright violence if necessary to impose this agenda. But... But we, the revolutionary communists, we are organizing to defend the people. Thank you, dear. I don't need your defense. But we are organizing to defend the people from fascist attacks as part of moving to abolish and dismantle this whole system, which gives rise to this, to replace it with a new socialist system that empowers people to uproot oppression of any kind. So as you can see, my friends, if... And when they succeed in getting what they want, which is a complete meltdown of the societal fabric of our nation, then they will blame it all on conservatives 
and Christians. Mark my words, that's their MO. That's their dream. They want to complete their fundamental transformation of America. And their fundamental transformation of America amounts to what will be, I'll dub it, the Great American Meltdown. So when Sarah Palin rhetorically asks the question, do they want a civil war? The question is asked because of all the observable tactic, tactics that we see them engaging in. All their gaslighting, all their shenanigans, all their corruption, the blatantly obvious two-tier justice system, the double standards being allowed and engaged in. The list goes on and on and on. So, But when she asks the question, then right on cue, the leftist miscreant media, along with the D.C. swamp creatures, they go apoplectic, condemning her and accusing her of calling for a civil war. And it's always mind-numbing and laughable to me to hear these people always accusing you of the very thing that they themselves are doing nevertheless i'm gonna have to go to a break really soon but i want to finish up with with this with these thoughts here nevertheless in light of everything they're seeing it is a demonstrably fair question to ask do they want the civil war because it is the logical terminus for a lot of other questions like How much more will Americans take and put up with? What will be the straw that breaks the camel's back? How much more demonstrably destructive policies can this nation endure? How much longer before the proverbial poop hits the fan? As I've said on numerous occasions, folks, they keep poking the bear and poking the bear and poking the bear. And then when the bear finally gets angry enough to strike back in self-defense, they'll blame the bear and call it dangerous and extremist. I want to be clear because some people have a propensity for trying to misrepresent the things I'm saying or mischaracterize what I'm saying. I am not, and neither was Sarah Palin calling calling for or advocating a civil war. That's not what we are doing. We are both simply asking out loud what we are observing, and that is that that is what they want. That is what they are provoking. And the left, along with all their useful idiots in the media, are very much the ones instigating what they want to see. They are fomenting it. They are sowing the seeds for it. And they would be utterly overjoyed and gleeful if, yes, a bunch of deplorable MAGA types, in their view, would lash out against their corrupt system. This is simply something that is observable. It's an analysis of their actions. Do they want a civil war? Yes, they do. And sadly and tragically, they may get one, but not because we're calling for one, but because at some point in time, enough people are going to be so sick fed up and disgusted with what's going on that the left just may get what it wants and what it's wishing for and folks i'm going to tell you it won't be pretty and it won't be good for anybody i'll be back stick around there's captain crown shadow of your wings Casting crowns, the shadow of your wings. Welcome back, Andy White here. You listening to open up the doors, integrity in broadcasting here on Faith FM, WEGB ninety point seven and ninety three point three in that peak, WEGQ ninety one point seven in Quag. And I want to get back into my stream of consciousness here. Like I said, I've got a lot, a lot, a lot on my plate here. I'm sure this is going to probably carry into the into the second hour in one form or another and there's some things i really want to get to scripturally that i hope to get to in this first hour but i want to build the case a little bit more before i get to that because in many ways in many ways we are already in a non-kinetic civil war of sorts will it go kinetic uh, kinetic i don't know i don't know i certainly hope not but i will say this again watching what they've been doing to this country for the last several years, one cannot escape the feeling that what they are doing, 
they are doing on purpose. So like I said, right now, a civil war of sorts is it's being waged in the form of lawfare. I don't know who came up with that term, lawfare, but it's really, it's really uh, apropos. We are fighting this civil war right now on the battlefield of lawfare. The court system is broken. It's corrupt. And justice is under attack. Lawfare. Again, it's, it's, it's what they're engaging in right now. With all of their lawless antics and corruption, with all of their unjust prosecutions, we have right now nonviolent, peaceful, God-fearing pro-lifers who are being sentenced to jail for protesting at abortion slaughterhouses. Pro-lifers are being rounded up by our government in continuing waves of arrests. All the while, real criminals with violent and repetitive crime records are being let go and released back onto the streets of America, with the result being soaring crime rates raging across America. I I have a stack of stuff here just talking about the crime situation in cities all across of America. But we, we can see it happening. I don't have to get I don't have to get into the weeds with that. But crime is through the roof because of our broken and absurd and unjust legal system. It's become so corrupt and broken down. But here's where it gets more dangerous, even more dangerous. Not only does this corrupt regime the 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 the, 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 the Biden's DOJ with Merrick Garland. Not only does this corrupt regime go after its political opponents with threats of prison time, they're also out to imprison their leading political opponent, Donald Trump. we, We see this going on. Four indictments, all bogus, all ridiculous, but they're engaging in lawfare to destroy the man, to destroy his following. And make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about what they want you to believe. It's not about Donald Trump. It's completely about their power and their hatred of what he represents. I don't care what your feelings are regarding Donald Trump one way or the other. It is unjust what they're doing to that man. It is corrupt. It is Stalinist. And every one of us, I don't care if you're for him or against him, you need to have the, 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 the uh, intellectual honesty to stand up and say this is wrong. Just yesterday from Jay Sekulow, who's the, the founder and the CEO, I guess you could say, of, of the American Center for Law and Justice. Jay Sekulow is a renowned constitutional lawyer who's... who's uh, who's represented numerous, numerous cases in front of the Supreme Court. And to the best of my knowledge, he's never lost a case in front of the Supreme Court. I'm pretty sure he may be one, but I don't think he's ever lost when he's he's gone before the Supreme Court. Jay is an incredible lawyer. But just yesterday, he, he sent out a newsletter. I'm on the mailing list as well as some other people I know. But he sent this out. This was the headline in his newsletter yesterday. Quote, the left is trying to ban President Trump from the ballot across the country, and we just filed a major lawsuit to stop it. Jay writes in his email, it is the most insidious manipulation of the Constitution I've ever seen. And remember, he's a constitutional expert and lawyer. It's the most insidious manipulation of the Constitution I've ever seen. Far left organizations are pressuring state officials to prevent Americans from voting for the candidate of their choice. They're trying to declare President Trump as being disqualified from office for insurrection. They're referring back to January 6th, which wasn't an insurrection, but they are trying to to uh, disqualify him from office under their abuse and Uh, misuse of the 14th Amendment. And Jay writes, the implications go far beyond his candidacy. Again, this is bigger than Donald Trump. Leftists have filed a lawsuit 
demanding that the Secretary of State of the state of Colorado unilaterally declares President Trump illegible for the ballot. Jay writes, it's outrageous. That's not how the Constitution works. It's a direct violation of the voting rights of millions of Americans. This is election interference. And, and the, AOC, the ACLJ is now representing this case uh, and fighting it. And, it's gonna, and they're going to fight it in the local courts, and they're going to bring it all the way to the Supreme Court if it needs to get there. But my point is, when does all of these things, this lawfare that they've been doing, when does this turn into a literal civil war? Do you think if they, if, if they, have, the, if they have the audacity to actually arrest Donald Trump, convict him, on these bogus charges, do you think that might trigger a civil war? Do you think they, they would be crazy enough to do that? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just asking the questions. The sign, the sign on the cage at the zoo says, please don't poke the bears. But there's always some idiots who don't listen. Poke the bear, poke the bear, poke the bear. On so many different levels, they're trying to poke the bear. For instance, I'll, I'll change gears a little bit. I think of all this, all this talk of reinstating mask mandates and new vax measures or more COVID lock, lock, lockdowns like they've been hinting at. I think it's simply another attempt to poke the bear, to incite more civil unrest. They know the, the majority of Americans at this point in time recognize those stupid masks are useless and even harmful. They've got hundreds and hundreds of studies showing it. That, there was a big one that came out last week, the Cochrane Report. I don't want to get into the weeds on that. But the Cochrane Report basically amalgamated over 100 studies and came up with this, this incredible revelation. Masks did nothing to stop or mitigate, mitigate the spread of COVID. In fact, they were probably harmful. I won't get into it. But this is, this is science. They say follow the science, but they don't follow the science. They don't follow the science when it comes to biology. They don't follow the science when it comes to virology. They don't follow the science when it comes to climatology. They just exploit things for their own power. Now, I think that's what they're trying to do with this, with this whole thing, with, with, this, with this, new, this new beefing up of, of masks and, and vaccines all of a sudden. They know that, I think, most sane people won't comply with this nonsense again. So when they do figure out that that won't work anymore, they'll come up with some other emergency, some other thing that they can utilize in order to be justified in their own minds when they try and clamp down again and bring in new oppressive measures into our society. And trust me, folks, this is where it's going. There's so many here. There's so many things here. There's so many things here. Oh my gosh! Let me. I'm going to look at my time here, because I do want to get into something before the second hour. Let me just say this real quickly before I take another quick break, because these are the kind kind of things that that get people angry. These are the kind of things that bring people out into the streets to protest, and they're just hoping that maybe some of these protests will will get out of hand, like a January sixth. But did you hear about this one? This ought to make the hair stand up in your back. Last week, at the beginning of the new school year, this was a question that was being raised by parents of students in New York City. ABC News, this was, this was their news report. Staten Island officials say they're concerned about unvaccinated asylum seekers. That would be illegal aliens, but they won't call them illegal aliens. But this was, this was an ABC News quote. Staten Island officials say they're concerned about unvaccinated asylum seekers in schools. New York City, why? Why are they concerned about this on, on Staten Island? Because New York City waived school vaccine requirements for illegal immigrant children. So the question that was going around the news media, the conservative news media, and people who were concerned about this just last week, the question was, are you okay with this after the city required your kids to be vaccinated? You see, look at this, folks. New York City schools won't allow American citizens into school without a COVID vax or their other regular vaccinations. But those vax requirements are now being waived for thousands and thousands of illegal students. So do you really think this is about the health and welfare of the students? I mean, I mean, COVID can't spread from illegals, but only from citizens. 
you, you, it's obvious. The double standard and the obvious hypocrisy, this is what causes protests. And there were protests in Staten Island the other day. Staten Island Borough President Vito Fasala worries that this vax waiver could place the health of other children at risk. Now, of course, I've always kind of questioned the logic of that idea, but that's what he says. I, I don't want to digress. But Fasala last Saturday led a group in protest saying that this double standard is problematic. Yeah. And he said this, what is really obvious, what is common sense. Staten Island president, borough president said this. We think that if you're going to impose a standard on ordinary citizens, that same standard should be imposed on individuals who came from 120 different countries and want to show up on day one for school. By the way, folks, as of last year, 18,500 illegals were added to the New York City school system. 18,000. 500 illegals now have their vaccinations wavered. But if your child is an American citizen, again, isn't vaxxed, they can't go to school. So let me ask again the obvious. Vax mandates necessary for us, but not for them. Really? Really? And we can go on and go on and go on. I got a stack of stuff here talking about the, the meltdown at the border, the dangerous things that and we've talked about this on this broadcast for, for over and over again. But the, the things that we're even seeing Democratic governors and Democratic mayors saying now, these 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 governors of liberal states and mayors of liberal states are now starting to starting now they're starting to sing the blues about the influx of the illegal aliens and 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 the and the burden they're becoming. I, I won't go into all the details with that right now because I, I want to come back to something when I come back. But here's something that Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene said the other day. This is my point. How much can people take of the administration's destructive policies on every level, whether you want to talk about the border, whether, whether you want to talk about the economy, whether you want to talk about lawfare, whether you want to talk about... Um, uh, oil production, but specifically regarding the, the, the danger that is now upon us because of our southern border. Marjorie Taylor Greene the other day said this. I'm just quoting what she said. I'm not agreeing with it, but I'm pointing it out because this is the direction of what is almost a logical conclusion. She said this. If the Biden administration refuses to stop the invasion of cartel-led human and drug trafficking into our country, states should consider seceding from the union. This is a congressperson talking about a civil war because that's what would happen. States should consider seceding from, this, from the union. That, that, that's what happened in the civil war. From Texas to New York City to every town in America, she wrote, we are drowning from Biden's traitorous America last border policies. And she's right. Now, she's, she's right about that. I don't think states should secede, but I've talked about this before. It's been prophesied in the past by several that America would break up, but I won't touch on that right now. But here's what I'm going to say before I take a break, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more when I come back. Deuteronomy... 28 is a chapter with the blessings and the cursings that God gave to the nation of Israel. And in Deuteronomy 28, verse 43, 44, this was one of the judgments that God said would happen to the nation. The alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Stick around, I'll be right back. Short break. The fusion of heart, mind, and soul. This is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM, WEGB, 
90.7 and 93.3 in that peak and WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. I've only got a few minutes left of this first hour and I want to get right to some things that I really want to tie together some of these things and I got a whole lot more that, that we'll probably get to in the second hour. I'll see how the second hour is going to go. I'm going to play that by ear. If, if worse comes to worse, I'll bring this into next week because there's a lot of stuff, again, just that's, that's happening that ties together. But right now, real quickly, if you'd like to call in in the second hour, write down the phone number, 631-725-2069, 631-725-2069. And uh, if you've never subscribed to my YouTube or my Rumble channel, please subscribe to those video platforms. We upload all of these uh, uh, broadcasts and archive them over there on Rumble and YouTube. YouTube, I'm going to bet, is going to take this one down if they even let me put it up, but it, it will be on Rumble. But you can find me on either YouTube or Rumble at uh, Andy White. Open up the doors, hit the little hit subscribe, and you'll get notifications uh, when we do upload these these broadcasts and archive them. And I would ask that you would you know, share them around as well. Share them around. All right, I want to touch on something here that's very important because it's something I've talked about several times, numerous times over the last several years. I have spoken out and taught on out of Deuteronomy 28, which again is the chapter where there, there are the blessings and the declared judgments of God that are detailed in that chapter. And I need to do so again now. Because again, as always, these things that we are seeing in the geopolitical and political realm, they're shadows of what's going on in the heavenlies. And they're all, it, it, I, 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 I say this all the time, you cannot separate the political from the biblical. I know we want to do that, but you can't do that if you have a biblical worldview. And I want to say this regarding Deuteronomy 28. When you read through that chapter, especially the judgments that God said would come upon Israel, Deuteronomy 28 is unfolding completely and literally right in front of our eyes. But it's also being completely ignored by both the church at large and its so-called prophetic voices. And the funny thing about that is I hear so many of these so-called prophets and prophetic voices in the land declaring and proclaiming the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 while ignoring all of the warnings and all of the prophetic judgments. I hear them prophesying about a supposed coming, turning around of the lawless and chaotic state and condition that America is in. I hear them declaring a coming renewed peace and prosperity with some imaginary wealth transfer coming that they've completely misappropriate and taken completely out of context, but I'll digress. I won't digress with that. But here's my point. I don't ever hear them, no, not one of them, reflecting or mentioning the warnings and the judgments of Deuteronomy 28. And yet when you read the list, you say, man, that's the condition of our country right now. These, these so-called prophets they go about blaming all of our national ills merely and solely on the devil. The devil's attacking us. Wickedness is attacking us. Wick and the devil is it. The, the, the devil is loose and fancy free. And wickedness is abounding. But let me be, let me say it clearly. Let me say it as clearly as God has said it. What we're witnessing in America is not simply the devil sneaking around behind God's back. It's God's judgments on America. And to whatever degree the enemy is involved, it's God himself releasing the enemy as the rod of his judgment. Let's read what he clearly says. And I've only got two minutes to do this. I'll bring it into the next hour. But in Deuteronomy 28, God says, but it shall come to pass. If you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today, then all of these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and cursed you shall be in the country. The Lord will send on you cursing. Who, the devil? No, the Lord will send on you cursing, confusion and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. As my grandmother used to say, folks, let me tell you something. 
When you hear preachers and teachers say that the judgments of the word of God were for national Israel, but not for us as a nation today, they need to be reminded that Israel was called and given as a paradigm of how God deals with all the nations of the earth. Throughout Isaiah, God calls Israel his witnesses to the nations. In Ezekiel, he says, I will set my glory among the nations. All the nations shall see my judgments, which I have executed. And I can go on, and I can go on, and I can go on. And I probably will when we get into the second hour. I got a lot here. But folks, America is reaching critical mass. Internally, our nation is sick from the soul of the foot even to its head there is no soundness in it and externally our enemies are circling up above like vultures waiting to pounce and like sharks circling for the kill and just as the Lord God Almighty told his chosen people Israel in Deuteronomy 28 the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies you shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them pictures of Afghanistan anyone you shall become troublesome to all the kingdoms of the earth and your carcasses shall be food for the birds of the air and for the beasts of the field. He said that to his people. I'm sorry to say it, but this is the situation that we find ourselves in. So you might say, Brother Andy, what should we do? How, how do we deal with these things? Remain steadfast and immovable in the faith. Be constant in prayer, beloved. Be in the secret place. Soak yourself. Soak yourselves in Psalm 27, Psalm 37. Soak yourselves in Psalm 91. As I talked about a few weeks ago, strengthen yourself in the Lord. We're not to fear these things. We are to overcome these things. That's the point. If you'd like to call in, 631-725-2069, and throw some fuel on the fire, if you want to pour some gasoline on my fire, call in, 631-725-2069. Be part of the conversation. Be part of the discussion. And a couple of things I want to reiterate and... uh uh, emphasize regarding the connections again biblically we look at these things through a biblical worldview through a biblical lens we don't look at them simply and totally as 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 political events I, if i said it once i've said it a million times the political is nothing other than the 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 shadow uh, and and the the, the temporal reality of the really the eternal reality the war in the heavenlies and these things are totally 100 percent connected just reading through as an example deuteronomy 28 if you've never read that through that chapter i would seriously recommend you read through it and pray over it because it's the word of god and as i said in the in the first hour regarding these things, especially the way some in the church like to cherry pick the blessings and conveniently leave out the judgments, their, their, their selective uh, cherry picking of the scriptures, and, and particularly, well, a lot of us do that. A lot of us do that in the church, but I, 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 I find it particularly annoying with a lot of these self-proclaimed popular prophets and, and 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 let me say again as i often i feel like i always got to qualify these statements i believe in prophets i believe there are modern day prophets but they're rare and they are rare a few the the vast majority of of these people are um uh questionable at best well i'll just leave it there for now i'll just leave it there for now but let me say this. I want to reiterate something that I, uh, that I was touching upon at near the end of that first hour. Because, again, I hear so many saying how, you know, I, I listened to this prophecy from a very well-known, quote-unquote, prophetess the other day. I listened to a lot of her stuff to see where she's coming from. And I'm not going to say the, the, the person loves the Lord. I'm not going to say she's not a Christian. She loves the Lord. I think she I, 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 I think she goes off the reservation a bit, you know. I, I, she says a lot of things that are actually right and true, not so much prophetically speaking, just by way, but just by way of her analysis of situations. But then when she starts 
bringing in a lot of this quote unquote uh, dominionism and wealth transference stuff and again taking scriptures out of context she's she, this particular person is constantly taking mil- what are clearly millennial blessings yeah there's going to be a wor- a wealth transfer it's when Jesus comes back yes there is going to be a restoration of all things when Jesus comes back she, I, she was she was given this pro- prophecy the, the other day about saying how Jesus won't come back until the restoration of all things uh, mis, mis, uh, uh, mischaracterizing the, the, the verse in Acts where it says that, that the heaven must receive Jesus until the restoration of all things and then he will send forth the son. But, but uh, the Greek grammar there is saying that the, until the restoration of all things, in other words, until the restoration of all things isn't going to happen until Jesus comes back. Yet she was putting the, ca- the, 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 the horse before the cart. But I digress a little bit. My point is this, is that they always love to, to focus on blessings and peace and prosperity. And again, <sighs> trying to give some people a little bit of grace and a little bit of, of the benefit of the doubt. I know they're trying to encourage the saints not to fear. I understand that. But you can't encourage people not to fear by promising them things that aren't true. That leads to hope deferred. That leads to when they see that when they see the things that you said aren't coming to pass, that leads to despair. And that's the danger of of a lot of these what I call pillow or I shouldn't say I call David Wilkerson years ago used to call them pillow prophets. The popular pillow prophets, you know, they want you to just lay down and go to sleep and feel comfortable on their pillows because, you know, everything's peace and prosperity. When in fact, God is saying himself, I'm sending the judgments. I'm doing it. Stop blaming the devil. Read through Deuteronomy 28. There is a whole laundry list there. There is a whole litany of things there that God says he is going to do to his faithless nation and again let me go back throughout I, I want to repeat something I said in the first hour just to tie it all back together throughout Isaiah really through all the prophets God has always called Israel his witnesses to the nations God called them to be a paradigm to witness to the fact that he alone was God and not the idols of the nations. To witness alone to the fact that when a nation does walk with God, they're blessed. There are blessings. There are blessings in Deuteronomy 28. If you walk in my ways, then you shall be blessed in the city. You shall be blessed in the country. The, 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 you shall uh, produce. There are blessings when a nation walks in the ways of God. Cursed. Uh, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, it says. Cursed is a nation that deserves God. All the nations that, des- that, that, uh, that reject God shall be turned into hell, he says. He says in Ezekiel, I will set my glory among the nations. All the nations shall see my judgment, which I have executed. They shall see my hand, which I have laid on them. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel, see, because they're the, they're the witnesses. They were the people of God. They were the ones that God, that they, they were the favorite of God. Everyone knew that. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel, what, was blessed by God? Yeah, they'll know that they, that, that they were blessed by God, but that's not what the verse says here. When, when, when Israel had a good king and, 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 they were, and they were serving God, they were blessed. That was the promise of God. But there was another promise. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they were unfaithful to me. Therefore, I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies, and they fell by the sword. Oh, we just don't like reading that. Oh, we just want to blame the devil. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, says the Lord. Well, that's true in, an, in another context. When, you, when you're walking with God, the Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. But in the context of these things, we're, we are talking about nations, not just individuals. The, the, the blessings on individuals are one thing, but there's a, there's a, there's a greater purpose, especially in the context of, 
of Deuteronomy 28. It's about the nation. It's about how they are as, you know, innocent people often reap the consequences of their corrupt government. We can read about that. We know about that. We've seen it in biblical history. Jeremiah was given a vision of two baskets of figs, good figs and rotten putrefying figs. And God told Jeremiah that the good figs, the good figs were the ones that were going to be carried off into Babylon. But why were they going to be carried off into Babylon? Because God was going to destroy Israel. Well, actually, at that point, Israel was already, the northern kingdom was already destroyed by the, by the Assyrians, by Syria. But now God was going to, to destroy Judah and Jerusalem. And the rotten figs were going to be slain in the streets. God was going to preserve his remnant. That was the bottom line with that. God was going to preserve his remnant. Now, I'm saying all that to say this, because we got to look at the word of God in its totality. And so many of these modern day pillow prophets say that those things have nothing to do with the church. It only had to do with Israel. But then why do they just take the blessings? How convenient. They always take the blessings and disregard the curses. Again, they think it's a buffet table where they can pick and choose what they want. The word of God is on a buffet table where you can pick and choose what you want, what you can take what you like and leave what you don't like. No, that's not, that's not how we are to approach the word of God. But to further nail this thought down, Paul writes in Romans 15, he's very explicit. For whatever things were written before, like Deuteronomy 28, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning. Learn something from this, folks. What things were written before Paul? Well, Deuteronomy 28, the prophets, the Psalms, the prophecies, all those things, because that's all the early church had. They were still, they were still writing the New Testament. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. Learn the principles. Learn how God deals with a backslidden people, a backslidden nation, a godless nation that turns to, uh, to, to all the abominations. He told them if they, he told Israel if they engage in the abominations of the Amorites and the Canaanites, uh, he warned them, he, he, he warned them, do not engage in their practices for all of these things that these nations practice are an abomination to me. Things like, oh yeah, Oh, yeah, right. Homosexuality and transgenderism, things like that, things like idolatry, things like sorcery, things like seeking after mediums. We can go through the list, folks. Oh, that's the law, brother Andy. All these things were written before were written for our learning. They're, they're, they're God's principles and precepts that we that 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 never that never go away. Because God doesn't change. For whatever things were written before were written for a learning. Then he, Paul doubles down on that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now all these things happen to them as examples. You mean like you mean like the enemies of Israel coming in and, and destroying the people of God? The nation of God? The nation that God said was the apple of his eye? The nation that God said he loved? God allowed, God warned that he would send the enemies in to destroy them. Now all these things happened to them as examples, Paul writes, and they were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. So I challenge anybody to tell me that I'm taking scripture out of context. No, I take the scripture in its entire context, period. I take the whole counsel of God seriously and soberly. Israel was, and still is, nationally speaking, God's witnesses to the nations of how he deals with nations. Ezekiel said, actually the Lord said, which is written in Ezekiel, the word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel said. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, when a land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness, I will stretch out my hand against it. He didn't say just Israel there. He didn't say when Israel sins against me, but this doesn't pertain to the other countries. This doesn't be pertain to the other nations. I'm not interested in the other nations. You need to read the prophets if you think that. 
because it's wrong thinking. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when a land sins against me by persistent unfaithfulness, I will stretch my hand against it. I will cut off its supply of bread, send famine on it, and cut off man and beast from it. And even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness. This in Ezekiel 14. And further, further down that chapter, he talks about the remnant that he, that he does preserve. So I don't want to be misunderstood here. God always preserves a remnant. But the nation is destroyed. The nation is brought down to nothing. So folks, let me tell you something here. And I'm going to get into some of the other, the other news stories as, as we progress. Or you can call in 631-725-2069. I'll take your phone calls. But let me tell you something wrapping up this thought right now. When you hear a preacher or a teacher say, when it comes to the warnings and judgments of Scripture, when you hear them claiming that all that was only for Israel and has nothing to do with us today or with other nations in general, Yet at the same time, speaking from the other side of their mouth, they start claiming all the blessings. Shut them down and stop listening to them. Stop listening to them. Out of a hundred so-called prophets I, I get across my news feed on YouTube, I might listen to one or two of them because most of them I can't stomach. I'm sorry to say that. I, I'm probably going to lose some, 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 some listeners by saying that. I'm probably going to get some flack for saying that. I can't stomach it. Every time I see something clearly laid out in the Word, and I hear the Spirit of God speaking to me and showing me something, without, without, w w w without a doubt, within, within days or moments, I, I see some, some prophet on, 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 on social media saying the exact opposite. And sometimes, I, I, many, I go to the Lord and say, God, did I miss it? What am I missing here? Am I hearing you? Am I hearing from you or not? The Bible says, seek the face of the Lord. Seek him in the holy place. Seek him in the secret place. I read your word. I see something in your word, something that says that, that, that I will send in the enemies and they will defeat you. And then I hear some prophets saying, God's not sending in these enemies. God's going to stop these enemies. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And, they and then they start just cherry picking scripture out of context. I'm just being, uh, brothers and sisters, I am laying this out as truthfully as I know how. Again, because I'm a full gospel guy, and I believe in prophets, and I believe in prophecy, and I believe in words of knowledge and words of wisdom. But just like it was in the days of Micaiah, when, 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 when Jehoshaphat, and when I believe it was uh, Ahab, sent for the prophets, whether Ahab should go out to battle or not, there was only one guy out of 400 that told them the truth. I know, I've probably said this many times. I've gone through this. I've gone through this soapbox many times. But I'm going to keep hammering it away. I'm just going to keep hammering it away. Because I see it every single day on, on social media, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Truth Social. All these, all these, these flowery, fluffy, uh, candy cotton, prophetic words going around. And everyone jumping through hoops. And in the meantime, I'm looking around and I'm saying, what do they not and now somebody might says well brother don't look around because you know we got to walk by faith not by sight but the thing is the scriptures they're using they're taking out of context again there will be a restoration i'm no i know i'm repeating myself but i want to make the point there will be a restoration of all things when when jesus comes back there will be there will be a wealth transfer when jesus comes back yeah millennial blessings the, the lamb shall lie down, the, the lion shall lie down with the lamb and, and, and I'll make all your enemies be at peace with you and all the nations shall come up to Jerusalem and, 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 and Judah and Israel and, and the mount of the Lord shall be great and glorious in that day. That ain't happening until Jesus comes back. So stop saying that we're going to do it now and stop saying God's going to do it now because there's a whole heck of a lot of stuff that's got to go down according to the scriptures. That's got to come first. I talked a couple of weeks about a couple of weeks ago about about the, the the logistics of the prophetic scriptures. And you just can't be taking a scripture out of context and saying, yes, I'm, I'm believing for this right now. No, something else has to happen first.
I hope this is resonating with some of you. Because it's, this is this is so important. We find ourselves as a nation in a very dire and increasingly dire situation. And it's going to get dark. It's going to get dark. And it's going to get dark because of what I see in the scripture, what God has clearly laid out as his paradigm for a wicked and abominable nation that, that, that legislates laws that legislates abominations into laws that that suppresses the righteous that throws the righteous in prison for standing up for 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 life and for standing up for godliness for standing up for all things that are right and they get oppressed and they get persecuted they get thrown in the prison and yes it's always been that way throughout history especially in regards to the church but America was never supposed to be that. And we're no longer that. Or we are becoming that, but we weren't supposed to be, I should say. So when I said at the end of the broadcast, Brother Andy, you, you, you're being a Debbie Downer. No, 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 I'm being realistic. And I'm saying, yes, of course we have hope. It's when Jesus comes back. Of course we have, our hope is eternal in the heavens. But we need to prepare ourselves. I'm saying this all the time, prepare, 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 prepare. Be be soaked in the scriptures. Again, Psalm 27, Psalm 37, Psalm 91. I just keep saying them because those are my top three go-to, go-to psalms. But we got 150 of them to choose from. Go to your favorite psalms too. Psalm 34, you know, Psalm 23, whatever. Because you're going you're to need to strengthen yourself in the Lord in these dark days ahead. And again, so what I said in the first hour was that we are seeing right before us on so many different levels the things that God said he would do in that litany of judgments. If you can read through that and say, well, I don't see America in this, then I don't know what you're reading because it's so, it's so clear and obvious to me. When I read stories like this, I'll make it to some of these stories that are happening, that, <laughs> again, the audacity, the audacity of their hypocrisy. I talked about in the first hour about how um, these big tech companies are, are going to now be clamping down more and more on our free speech and how they're, how they're going to be going after what they deem, what they deem to be disinformation, misinformation, illegal content. And as I'm putting this together, I come across this, this news story from yesterday. You want to talk about unconstitutional corruption? You want to talk about hypocrisy? Listen to this new story. Listen to this headline. The Biden White House tried to interfere with free press. Now, one of the things in our First, first Amendment right is the freedom of the press. But the Biden White House this past week has sent a letter to CNN and the New York Times and other media outlets telling these new organizations how they are to report on the impeachment and on the Hunter Biden story. That is, that is illegal. That is unconstitutional. Let me read from the, from the news report here. In response to Republicans launching an impeachment inquiry against President Joe Biden, the president's administration has submitted letters to its sycophantic media allies, ordering them to call out the GOP's lies. Don't believe your lying eyes, folks. There's no evidence. And, and some of these miscreants in the media are doing just this. They're being dictated on what to say and what to report by the White House. According to CNN sycophant Oliver Darcy, who dutifully broke the story on behalf of the administration, 
The letter is, is specifically addressed to CNN, the New York Times, CBS News, the Associated Press, and Fox News and others. And uh, the letter ca- came from White House spokesman Ian Sams. And he said, it's time for the media to ramp up its scrutiny of House Republicans for opening an impeachment inquiry based on lies. <laughs> exactly what they did to Trump. It's like my, again, it, it's like, it's like they, they never changed their M.O. Exactly what they did to Trump. But now we're going to tell you, media, this is, what, this is how you're going to report this, because it's based on lies. The White, so the White House is basically trying to manipulate the news stories. And there was something here. Da, 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 da. Oh, this, this, is, this is just priceless. This, the, the, uh, the White House spokesperson says this. Covering impeachment as a process stories. Republicans say X, but the White House says Y. It is a disservice to the American people who rely on an independent press. (laughs) This is funny. The people rely on an independent press to hold those in power accountable. Hello, do you not realize your own cognitive dissonance? You are calling up the independent press and telling them what you want them to say. That's not very independent of them, is it? I mean, the cognitive dissonance, it's mind-boggling. It is absolutely mind-boggling. He goes on to say, this hypocrite. In the modern media environment, where every day liars and hucksters peddle disinformation and lies everywhere, from Facebook to Fox, Process stories fail to unpack the illegitimacy of the claims on the White House Republicans are basing all of their actions only on only to serve to generate confusion, put false premises in people's feeds and obscure the truth. He added. Now, what's really funny about this, this guy, um, um, this guy, oh, this was this was from Darcy. No, no, okay, no, that was from the White House. The guy from CNN, Darcy, he dutifully, he reported this, he dutifully echoed the administration's talking points, claiming in his news report on CNN that, quote unquote, Republicans have found no evidence of a crime. I'll get back to that in a moment. (laughs) Republicans have found no evidence of a crime. And he was slamming Republicans for having long sought to baselessly uh, portray Biden as a corrupt, crime-ridden politician engaged in sinister activities. This is the same CNN reporter who repeatedly reported and advocated the Russian collusion hoax. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, but this guy goes on to say there, and and this has been echoed a, a lot in the in the miscreant lamestream media that there is no evidence uh, to impeach Joe Biden. There's absolutely no evidence. Well, outside of the bank records that don't lie, outside of the bank records, outside of the suspicious activity reports that these banks, the banks have to submit suspicious activity reports on people. There were hundreds of them. Most people might never get one in their whole life. You and I would probably never get one. Some, some, some companies might get like maybe two or three and then they check it out and and it was legal. But there is something like, I don't even remember what the number is, but it was, it was, it was hundreds of suspicious activity reports flagged on hunter biden's uh bank records but there's but there's no, but there's no evidence the there's outside of the bank records outside of the suspicious activity reports outside of the wire transfers outside of the the private bank transactions the l the llc's there there's the, the biden's has set up over 20 shell companies 20 llc's that don't do anything except launder money but there's no evidence but outside of the of, of the of the of the over twenty LLCs, outside of the texts and the emails that that they that, that they have come across, not only on uh, Hunter Biden's laptop, but now other 
sources that have become whistleblowers outside of the text, outside of the emails, outside of the WhatsApp messages, outside of the photos of Joe Biden with Hunter's business partners. I never discussed business with my son. Outside of the photos, outside of the voicemails to his son that they now have in part of their collection of, of we don't have any evidence. Um, outside of the voicemails, the two business partners, the whistleblowers who have come forward and said, well, Joe, Joe was the brand. Joe was the big guy. Outside of the two whistleblowers' testimony, outside of the recorded phone calls between Biden and Poroshenko, the, Ukra- the former Ukrainian uh, president, we, 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 we've, we've seen this video 100,000 times. The, 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 the phone call between Biden and Poroshenko, the video of Joe Biden bragging about firing the Ukrainian prosecutor, Shokin, who turned out to be actually not a corrupt prosecutor, but he was, he was, pro, he was, he was investigating Burisma. He was investigating Hunter Biden, and that was very dangerous, so they, 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 they smeared him saying he was corrupt, and they had him fired, but that was upon penalty of if you want your billion dollars. Hey, hey, Poroshenko, if you want your billion dollars in aid from America, fire Shokin. That's that's pay to play. That's quid pro quo. That's illegal. Nothing's been done about it until now. Finally, maybe. But. But besides all of this mountain of evidence. These miscreants in the media keep parroting the White House line. There is no evidence. Just like there was no evidence just like there was no evidence of a stolen election when in fact there was a mountain of evidence i'll be back with more folks it just gets more and more fun from here stick around Fusion of heart, mind, and soul. This is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7, 93.3 in FB, WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. Praise God, praise God. Well, we're going to, we got a, we, uh, during that uh, little bit of a musical break, we got a caller that called in. I want to get right to the phone. And hello, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, Andy. It's Bob Riverhead. How are you? I don't want to step on your airtime, really. You're doing a great show, but I do believe that they're trying to goad us into a physical civil war so that then they could use the military to clamp down on us and declare martial law. So we mm-hmm. should outsmart them and not play that game. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I also want to remind people that digital uh, dollars are coming, and they're going to try to clamp down on that. And I'll just give you a self-testimony. Uh, I had opened a bank account almost two years ago. Put one check in there. I do nothing online. I don't use my phone online. I don't bank online. I don't check statements online. And yet, the bank has got charges for uh, charges at restaurants and ATM withdrawals. And I'm like, how is that possible? That account has never been used for anything. They've never touched it. So be careful that the bank isn't doing these debanking scams that have been going on for the last year and a half. Everybody should watch their statements. And that's the next thing we probably need to do. We probably need to make sure we've got our money splattered around, or maybe we're going into precious metals or something else. But if you leave it in cash, I think we're all going to get a bad wake-up call. So uh, yeah, well, yeah, so it's all heading that way, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be very, very tricky to navigate these times. Very tricky to navigate around some of these things that are coming down the pike. And I do agree with your opening statement for sure that i mean that was really the point of my whole first hour that they are trying to goad us that's the right word i didn't use that word but it's a good word to use they, they are trying to goad people they're trying to goad factions or whoever again my my analogy though been poke the bear poke the bear poke the bear and they're trying to to go go someone something into happening and 
sadly, human nature being what it is, sooner or later, something something probably will. But I agree with you. We 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 got to we got to resist that. We've got to we've got to you know uh, use our constitution and our constitutional rights to the best that we can, even though they keep trampling it. You know, like like we've been saying that they're, they're they're engaged in lawfare right now, and that's lawfare is is pretty terrible. It's pretty bad. It's pretty corrupt. But it's at it's still better than bullets flying around. Let's put it that way. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm going to paraphrase because I can't remember it exactly, but it's biblical. You know, a kind word will turn away an angry man. Mm-hmm. Something along those lines. Yes, Proverbs. Sure. Right, so, okay, so we should we should remember that. And all the more important that we should be actively engaged in coming up to 2024. Because uh, think about it, folks. Do you want four more years of what you had? I don't know that the country can sustain that, nor people's individual personal finances. You know, unless we're all going to be camping in the backyard and cooking on our barbecues and huddling around the open 55-gallon drum for heat. I mean, maybe we got to rethink this. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't care about people. I care about policy and being patriotic for the country that is supposed to take care of the people first. The first responsibility of government is to take care of the people, nothing else. That means that you get, you know, the, <laughs> the ability to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. And that also means that you get food on the table, a job, and a house roof over your head. Mm-hmm. Because without those, you don't have a society, and you don't have a country, and you don't have civilization. You have chaos. You might as well knock us back to the Stone Age. Which is what they put us back to the Wild West. Which is what they're doing now with the open borders. They're creating chaos. Of course. They're well, cre- it's, you know, they dilute the vote, and, and, and also it breaks down the, the respect for the Constitution and respect for what our country is, because everybody comes in with different cultural views, and, you know, everything can go then. Because, well, not in my country. You don't do it that way. Well, that's a dilution of the American way in a very subtle, deceptive way. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, go again. Who used lies and lies and deception? I think I know a guy that does that. Yeah, isn't he? Isn't he called the devil? <laughs> he mm-hmm. loves to deceive people in subtle ways that they don't even see it coming. And I think that's a lot of what's going on here too. What we see coming out of Washington. Yeah, and it trickles down. Mm-hmm. And every one of these policies show me where they were good for the country. I challenge anybody to show us where any of these policies that have come out in this time have been good. When I was watching this in 2020 and I was watching the riots, I thought I was watching newsreels from the late 60s and 70s. You know, so haven't we been here before and haven't we learned anything? Come on, America. You know, what do you want to do? You want to go down the rabbit hole in ideology? Or do you want to have food on the table and a roof over the head for you and your kids? and a job that at least to help pay your bills and you can move forward. Yeah. Or do, you, or do you want to be in the street? It's just simple. There's nothing really dramatic about this. And beyond that, you know, our founders did have the Judeo-Christian ethic. Hello? They wrote the Constitution. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this idea of separation of church and state is not really a reality. Yes, it is part of our Constitution. And to be truthful, the only difference that that was supposed to mean is that if you wanted to use a public building and you were a certain religion, then other religions had to be able to use that too. Otherwise, you couldn't be exclusive. That was, there was no, well, you can't favor one religion over another, because that brings us back to England and them having, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, Church of England being sanctioned by the king. And they didn't want our government to sanction any one particular religion over another. Because they came from England, and they knew it that No, the, 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 the Constitution gives us, in, in the First Amendment, freedom of religion. The words separation of church and state are not in the Constitution. Those words, exactly. Those words came from a, a letter written by Thomas Jefferson uh, to, the, to the Danbury Baptist Church in Connecticut. And it's the, 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 the irony of it is that the modern-day leftists have flipped the meaning of it on its head. The Danbury Baptist wrote to to uh, Jefferson to complain that the state of Connecticut, I believe it was Connecticut, maybe it was Massachusetts, but I think it was Connecticut, um, Danbury, Connecticut, yeah. They, they wrote to Jefferson saying that the state was trying to impose restrictions on them. And Jefferson wrote back and said, oh, don't worry about that because they can't impose restrictions on you because the Constitution puts up this wall of separation between 
church and state. In other words, the state has no authority to get involved with what you're doing. They have flipped that completely around to make it sound like we're not allowed to engage in public expressions of faith. They've, they've corrupted it. They've absolutely corrupted it. But here's the thing, to rewind the tape a little bit about them goading us, and obviously as Christians, we need to be very, 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 very careful of, of, of fomenting that, that uh, attitude and that spirit as well. Um, having, well, I don't want to, maybe I shouldn't go there right now, but, but here's the thing I want to say right now. Unfortunately, not everybody out there is a Christian. We're looking at these things. We're, we're, we're praying for patience. We're, we want to be good and upstanding uh, citizens. We want to do things the right way, constitutionally, lawfully, righteously. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who are America first patriots, but they're not Christians. And they won't have, uh, and some, a lot of them are former military, and they don't have the kind of, um, necessarily, the kind of restraint and patience that we as a church would exhibit. So, you know, they, they might, they could very well be goaded into doing something that will be that tripwire. That is the danger. But what will happen is because the left is constantly um, putting us all into the same, uh, what, what, what did, what did Hillary Clinton say? The same basket of deplorables. Since that's what they do, they put, they put the conservatives and the Christians and anybody on the right into the same basket of deplorables will get blamed for it, whether we did it or not. Because, again, this is their M.O. So, to me... So we're, go ahead, go ahead. We're go ahead. no longer deplorables. We're domestic terrorists now. And, and as far as the, a little lesson in civics, you go listen to the 5,000-year leap. That was put out about, I don't know, five, six years ago. Oh, yeah, ago. yeah. Mm -hmm. Great thing to reference if you want to get a little quick education on the founding fathers and the was foundation that, is of that, the country. I, is that by Hayek or am I mis, mis can't remember. Oh, okay. But if you I mean if I'm sure if you look it up online, five thousand year leap, you'll find it. Who knows, maybe it's even on YouTube. Oh no, 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 yeah, that's that, that was a pretty 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 popular book a few years back. Uh, and an excellent one. Uh, as a quick uh, reference to uh you know, kind of get back to uh, a starting point of, you know, how and why this country was founded mm -hmm. and the principles that was held dear when it was founded. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're so we're so off the mark now. And I agree with you 100 percent. You know, whether you believe in the, the, the good book or whether you don't, it's pretty clear that the policies are not good policies for everyday life. And they're taking things to places where. It's it's just nonsensical. They they make no well, sense at all. Exactly. Well, exactly. I mean, again, the, the things they're doing, they got to be doing on purpose because they're diabolical. They're not stupid, but they are diabolical. I mean, right at the right when when uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia are coming into a new agreement with oil production, and they're going to be raising oil prices on the same day that the same week, I should say, that that's being done. On Mo I think it was Monday, which was 9-11, Joe Biden puts forth an executive order shutting down um, drilling and, and oil production in Anwar, Alaska, which he's, which he's done, which, which he did. He, he put forth an executive order to shut down. Anwar was opened up by an act of Congress in 2017, and for him to shut it down by executive order is unconstitutional, so I don't know how it's going to stand. But the point is this. You shut you, you shut down the Keystone Pipeline on the on the first day you're in office. You shut down. You have depleted. This administration has depleted our petroleum uh, our, our strategic petroleum reserves right now. I just saw this yesterday. Are at extremely dangerous low levels. We are not going to be able to get back to the level that our petroleum reserves were were at under Bush. I'm, I'm sorry, under under Trump, I should say, for many many years. On top of that. When, 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 when Trump was filling up the oil reserves, they were practically giving oil away. Remember well, that? This, Remember this, when, goes when, hand, this goes hand in hand with reducing the ability of the military to do their job. It goes hand in Not hand with a lot the, of things. Of course it does. It, it's, it's, it's their globalist agenda to, to bring America to its knees, and these are the people who are controlling our government right now. Well, that's Klaus Schwab, and I'll mention this. In order to get the global agenda and to get a worldwide digital currency, you need to destroy the U.S. dollar. And that's another thing that's going on here, because 
every other currency right. is valued against the dollar. If you destroy the dollar, then you can bring in a new global digital currency. As, which uh, as which the, they're working the on doing. Reference. Which the BRICS well, exactly. Which the BRICS so nations are looking to do. And this is, you know, uh, the, the coincidence is that there's the attacks are coming from many fronts. It's coming in the medical exactly. field. It's coming in the financial field. Yep. It's coming in the social field. It's coming even on food production. Mm-hmm. When you see, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what's going on with China buying up land. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of that oil that does come out of Alaska is getting shipped to China. Uh, and, um, you know, look, look at China buying up the land around military bases. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're being spied upon. Oh, uh, you, this you know, is, this is, that there's operatives here from China that are cell sweepers. I mean, there, there's so many things yep. that we should be paying attention to that don't get brought up. I try incredible. to on this broadcast. <laughs> I try I to. I know, and I love it. And I try to tell my friends, wake up, guys. Everybody is so consumed with the everyday life, and everyday life is becoming so difficult. People more and more just worry about, I just got to go to work. I got to get home. I got to take care of people. Well, this is true. This is true. People aren't paying and, attention. And, this is, and, then, and then we have the distraction of, well, I need to relax. There's my cell phone, my computer, my tablet, uh, you know, whatever it is, watch my streaming service, and, and people just want to kick back. We don't have any more energy, and this is another aspect. Well, Take distracted people, and keep them dumbed down, keep them bored, keep them away from things that might, you know, perk up their antenna. Because a dumb electorate, people, does not work in a democracy. You need to have an educated elect to do a good yeah. job in a democracy. And by the way, it's a constitutional republic, so I wish the Democrats would stop calling it a democracy. Well, that's part, that's part of their plan. Hello? But listen, but listen, I'm running out of time. I'm down to my last minute. So I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I got I to gotta get no, running thank here. Thank you, Andy. Thank you so for calling. More than I anticipated. Thanks. Thank you for calling in. God bless. Keep listening. Oh, always. Thanks a lot. God bless. Always. Thanks for the call. Okay. Bye. One of the things that our brother brought up, and I want to I reiterate in my last minute or two here. He went through a litany, that last caller, just went through a litany of things that are destructive policies uh, and, and things that are happening to this country, like China buying up farmland, um, our oil, our, our, our energy, energy supplies being diminished and curtailed. And this is the very reason why I want you to go back and read God's judgments that he delineated in Deuteronomy 28. Because it's all in there. This is my point for this, for, for this broadcast. The great American meltdown. It's all in there. And we need to prepare ourselves, as I've been saying for so long, mentally and physically and practically the best we can and be prepared. And, and, and yes, 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 rejoicing in hope, the hope that we have uh, in Jesus Christ, but not to be living in some kind of false security and false uh, hiding your head in the sand kind of a thing. I still have a stack, a stack of, of, of news reports here that I could go through, that, but I can't now. So maybe I will next week because I'm down to my last minute. But Homeland Security was just awarded $20 million dollars to give to police, mental health networks, and universities, churches, and school districts to help identify Americans as potential extremists. $20 million was just given out by Homeland Security to hunt down terrorists, but not Al-Qaeda, not BLM, not Antifa. (laughs) Like this brother just said, they're calling conservatives and Christians terrorists and they're using the money to infiltrate churches and schools and you know the deplorable moms who go to who go to uh you know school board meetings but having said that i am out of time literally thanks for joining in everybody i gotta fly here we'll pick this up again next week in the meantime keep it right here on Faith FM. Be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Stand firm and stand fast in the faith. Folks, Jesus is Lord. Take care. God bless.